Hey everyone, and welcome to Stellaris. My name is Chief Drunk, and today I'm back with the Church of Scientology. But first, we are having a beautiful look at, you guessed it, Uranus. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I've, I've always wanted to make this joke, um, but enough messing around right now. Uh, although, actually, I do want to take some time to just look at our solar system here, because we didn't really quite do that in the beginning, but there's some things to note. Obviously, we have uh, our sun here, we've got Earth, uh, home planet, which, uh, you know, already has quite a lot of population. 28, but I guess this is like 20 billion, probably? I guess that would make sense, because uh, million would be, you know, a little bit too small. But yeah, anyways, we also got the moon here, uh, a barren world. We can't, um, we can't colonize this, but there is a chance for us to eventually colonize Mars, because this is a terraforming candidate. Uh, though barren and devoid of life, this planet has water in frozen form and may once have been home to a thriving ecosystem. With the right technology, it could be terraformed into a habitable world. So this is something that we'll be doing much later, obviously, but eventually I'm looking forward to that. It's always kind of nice uh, to settle on Mars. But yeah, for now, there is still a couple of stations that we can build. We have some stations, one of them on, uh, you know, this uh, ice asteroid right here, which is really cool. I'm not sure if this... Like, is this known? I don't know, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool that's out there. But, you know, for example, the Europa moon of uh, Jupiter here, that has no station yet. So I think we're going to go and construct that one. I do want to build a building, obviously, on Earth, but I think uh, investing in mineral inf infrastructure, I guess, is, is probably good because that's going to give us more minerals in the long run. So, yeah. Uh, that is done. We are currently building a new science ship and we have sent one of our ships out to explore already. Now, I send it this way. I think it might be best or better if we go here first. So look at this. We've got, we've got nothing over here, right? So this is where the hyperlanes end. So this is one way. And then we have basically two ways over here, but they might connect as well. So I think this is this is the more important one to check out. So I think we should go here first, su survey this system, uh, go all the way here, and then we'll figure out what's over there. Uh, that's my plan anyways. Okay, so yeah, I think without further ado, we can actually go ahead and unpause the game, move forward. And there's something I want to talk about. Obviously, um, I didn't mention how Scientology was able to actually take on uh, well, not take on the Earth, but take over the Earth, I guess. And um, how we became the dominant, um, well, religion, company, government, uh, whatever you want to call it. And um, I, I'm not fully certain on that yet. Um, obviously, you guys, if you have some ideas, you can let me know. But what I've been thinking about is that people such as Tom Cruise and John Travolta, you know, celebrities like this helped uh, take over the world. Uh, that's at least my my in my mind. And so what I want to do is I've, I've got a list of uh, celebrities that are known to be members of Scientology right now, today. And um, I think that we should name complete. some of the, you know, systems, colonies, sectors, and, you know, ship classes after them. Now, specifically ship classes, I already have something very, very fun in mind. Uh, so, obviously, we've got Tom Cruise. So, I feel like that the Cruiser class should be the Tom Cruise class. And then it would only make sense if we would have like a battleship, the John Travolta class or something like that. That's my idea. Obviously, uh, you guys will have an, uh, yeah, will be able to um, make your own suggestions as well. But this is kind of what I'm thinking about at the moment. Okay, now we got our second science ship finished and we're going to, yeah, recruit our first uh, new scientist here. That's exciting. Uh, we have, ooh, anomaly discovery chance. I like this. Leader upkeep is awesome. Because we would save, actually, hmm, you know what, we might save this one for later, this is cool. But I kind of want to have the scientists right away, so we're going to go with the one that's cheaper. Um, and you are going to go and survey this system, there you go. You are, yeah, you've arrived in the Mintaka system, Zheng He. Uh, yeah, we haven't actually checked out our rulers at all here. We should definitely check our scientists as well. This is the Church of Scientology ship, um, Zheng He. Uh, okay, interesting. It's a science ship, and it's led by Ernesto Zalazar. Then we've got the second science ship here, the COS Chilkovsky, led by Kurt Müller. Oh, this is a German guy, apparently. That's that's funny, actually. All right, cool. 
And then, yeah, construction ship probably doesn't matter all that much. And then we've got uh, this fleet. I will definitely sign a leader at some point, but I don't think we need it right now. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll postpone that, I guess, to a later state. Okay, I think we all can also just go faster, because right now there's not that much going on. We might as well um, follow our science ship around and see what they're doing. Um, I have my next moves planned already, obviously, what we want to build. Um, yep, exactly. We have increased our mining output here, at least a little bit, so that's good. I think for now, you'll just come back into the orbit of the system here. And then the next thing I want to do is build the temple here. But for that, we need 200 um, minerals, right? Was it 200? Oh, no, it's actually less than that. Why is it less? Pretty sure... Wait, is it because of our governor? It's because of our governor. Well, I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Fernando... Al Fer I'll, I'm going to keep saying Fernando Alonso. Um, uh, but yeah, Fernando I'm Alonso. All right. Found. Maybe they're related. I, 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 I want them to be related, to be honest. Okay. We have our first anomaly right here. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Mintaka system. Ooh, interesting. Let's research that right away. I don't know why I said it like that. I guess I'm just excited for the series to start. Um, but yeah, so 200, was that enough? I, oh man. Yes, it was actually. 180 is all we need. Okay, so let's get this temple going. Uh, more spiritualists and we get some unity, which we need because again, unity is very important, uh, especially getting like some quick unity buildings in the beginning. Uh, that's like skyrocketing your um, obviously unit output, unity output, and that will jumpstart your traditions. And that can give you some very, very nice bonuses early on. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking about the the first tradition I want to pick is going to be expansion um, because that will, well, it actually starts with colony development speed. I don't want that, but I like the Starbase influence reduction cost. Um, that's or influence cost reduction. There you go. <laughs> That is cool. All right, Sonified Science. Let's actually slow down and but continue the speed. Uh, the CEO's Zenghe crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Mintaka system. The signal is a song, a complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, equation to be precise, and one that science officer Ernesto Zalazar cannot seem to get out of their head. Uh, who or what may have composed this song? Whoops. Contact report, okay, um, remains unknown, though it, its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics, I don't know what that is, suggests a point of origin from outside our galaxy. Curious. Interesting. Okay, and then remnants. Uh, the Church of Scientology is abuzz with news of alien remnants that were recently studied. These leavings are considered... Definite proof of intelligent, purposeful alien activity at some point in the past. We may still be alone now, but we are at least not the first to be so. Remarkable. Now, uh, we should also talk about <laughs> the, um, I guess, the UFO. Like, uh, Scientology is considered by some as part of the UFO religion group, uh, where basically UFO sightings and uh, all kinds of extraterrestrial whatever is being, uh, you know, taught. And so um, there is, uh, there is the so-called oh my god, space opera. Uh, I feel like uh, uh, yeah no no I feel like it, it, it is called a space opera. It's just a strange complete. name I, I guess. Um, but that has been uh, I guess taught by the Scientology leader, and um, it, it's very confusing. But it includes some incidents, so-called incidents, where, you know, all kinds of alien life forms, that, like there was a collected confederate, confederacy at some point, and it's a bit crazy, but um, I feel like it does definitely, you know, fit. And it definitely makes sense that, you know, Scientology uh, is abuzz with news uh, now that we have heard about this song, because uh, it will definitely be interpreted in a way that our, our preachings, our teachings have always been correct. That's basically what I wanted to say. But yeah, we have finished. I guess that's maybe maybe the, the perfect moment. We have finished our temple here. Simple constructs erected since time immemorial. Temples are places of quiet contemplation and communion with that which unites us all. Now, I'm not sure if quiet is the way to go in the Church of Scientology. I think we're maybe a little bit louder um, 
in in practicing our religion. But either way, I, I guess it, it finished at the right moment because just as we yeah heard this song or found out about this new song, um, we yeah we finished our first religious site. That's cool. Okay, now the system has been surveyed and uh, this barren lifeless world is showing signs of once having supported a biosphere. Okay, I think a routine difficulty will do. We'll do uh, easy and routine, but if anything that's like challenging or hard or very hard or something, we're not going to do until our scientists have leveled up. Okay, now the Habitable Worlds survey, uh, we now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Earth. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable life-bearing worlds. A commendable initiative. Yes, we will obviously do that. Updated. This is something that just constantly or like passively happens anyway, so... Yeah, that's cool. Let's check out Barnard Star over here. We've got a little bit of trade value in in this on this world, a toxic world. System survey okay. complete. Um, good. And this system survey is complete as well. We're gonna move on here and survey this system again. I kind of want to skip like these parts. Well, I I mean this we can't really skip, but I kind of want to like at least leave this one out and probably probably these uh, for now because we'll be able to get to them later. I first want to check out the other stuff. Um, but yeah, so no uh, habitable worlds just now. Uh, but I guess that's fine. I mean, I did turn that off. So it makes sense. And what, what do we have over here? It's actually pretty lackluster, to be honest. Like what? We have one molten world and then one probably frozen. No, barren world. All right. Uh, actually, well, there's a couple more. But toxic, barren. Yeah, none of them are particularly useful. All right, that's fine. That's fine by me. Okay, so we've got some minerals stored up. I think that's enough to, yeah, build a mining station first, then we'll build the research stations. And anything else? We could go for new... You know what? Yeah, we will definitely go for this. Let's build a new science ship of the Galileo class. Yeah, I want a third one. And... Um, we have our first tradition available. Okay, now usually what I what I used to do is I was gonna go with Discovery. I've always, oh man, Discovery is so strong. Like some people say it's overrated, but it's so cool. It gives you so many bonuses. Anomaly research speed is increased. Survey speed is increased. Ah oh, man, it's actually good. Damn. I wanted to make something. I wanted to do something different and go with a you know different uh, start. A discovery is so good. If you finish, you get research speed by plus ten percent, and then you can go for technological ascendancy. Now, okay, I'm gonna have to pick something here uh, where you guys don't choose. Um, honestly, I've always gone with discovery. I'm gonna go with expansion first. If if the shareholders, if you guys are against that, um, that's fine. You can tell me. Uh, and I guess the person who's responsible, Ross Urban, you can tell him um, next time. But uh, for now, I've, I've just gone with that. All right, we're going to go a little bit faster here. Uh, every time we have to read out an event, it will, uh, it will cause us some issues. But for now, I think we can go faster. Okay, population has not yet um, grown on Earth. Complete. Okay, we have discovered a ca terraforming candidate. A detailed survey of Mitaka. Okay, you know what? While we read this, you can go ahead. This is surveyed, so let's survey this system, uh, and we can continue reading. A detailed survey of Mitaka 4 has revealed that it may once have supported life in a distant past. There are significant deposits of frozen water at the polar ice caps complete. and beneath the planet's surface. The existence um, of valley networks suggest that the water, hold on, I'm gonna have to add a, yeah, this. Build the research stations, please. Uh, the existence of valley networks suggests that the water may have once, may once have flowed freely. Terraforming this planet would theoretically be, theoretically be possible, but we do not yet possess the technology to accomplish this monumental task. Okay, cool. And challenging, we're gonna leave that for now, as I said, uh, which is not uh, ready to do that. Okay, so we have two terraforming candidates right 
in, well, right next to us. One, obviously, Mars, and the second one here. That's really cool. Then we have two, two worlds that we've just found here. They're very small, though. 13, 10. This was a 16 level, or 16, uh, yeah, size planet. Uh, Mars is 13. Earth is 16, I believe. Uh, that's the soul station. Um, Earth is 16, yeah. So we haven't really got, like, a huge planet yet. That's kind of sad. But anyway, um, scientist Ernesto Zalazar has gained a level. Very good. And have I built the science ship? I have. Okay, let's assign a new leader. Let's recruit. Let's recruit the meticulous one right now. Yeah. Manon Dupont. Okay, so this is a French woman for sure. Rhonda Barksdale the third. <laughs> That's so cool. I want to have her at some point though. Um, but we'll recruit you for now. Okay, and you will explore. I don't want to go this way here. Yeah. Survey this system, please. Very cool. I think uh, three scientists are fine for now. I don't think we need more. Um, and now we'll be focusing on other things. We have enough housing on Earth. We have still two available jobs. And we could go ahead and clear some blockers. Now, what do we have here? We've got sprawling slums. This region's covered by vast shanty towns and slums filled with the poor and the outcast. Okay, we're gonna leave that for now, I guess. <laughs> Uh, maybe. Uh, a swirling miasma of plastic refuse covers a good portion of the Earth's largest ocean. And then this region, oh, what's this? Industrial wasteland, wasteland, okay. Is covered by ruined industrial complexes and toxic soil that treat us from a past age of progress. Okay, and we have the Ute Empire. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient civilization on Series 5. Our scientists think they inhabited this region of stars roughly 6 million years ago, based complete. on the age of the artifacts. The aliens called themselves the Ute, and appear to have been very large and flat arthropod analogs. It seems a System single individual... Uh, hold on, okay, we're gonna um, keep our, let our guys keep moving on. Uh, it seems a single individual could reach a length of nearly 100 meters as an adult, and it was apparently exceedingly rare for more than two or three Ute to travel aboard the same starship. Very good. Pro begins the precursors event chain, and we gain Situation three uh, minor artifacts. Let's quickly check that one out. Um, minor artifacts here. So what we can do, proclaim a religious revela revelation. Unity gained. Ooh, spiritualist ethics traction. Discovery of artifacts far predating our own civilization has given indisputable proof of our beliefs. That is perfectly what I was just talking about uh, earlier, remember? When we heard the song, this is exactly it. So I guess we are just learning about the incidents uh, that we were taught in the Church of Scientology. So yes, obviously, we're going to go with that first. Um, discover precursor insight. Oh, we could do that as well. No, I want to proclaim the religious... Revelation, and uh, I think one of those artifacts we're gonna sell to a private collector. 400, that's gonna double our current energy credits. That's awesome. Cool. Okay, we're still a company after all, and now we can go with Starbase Influence Cost Reduction by 10%. That's perfect because we haven't actually built a Starbase yet, but I guess uh, we will start. And I think the first one I want to go for... Um, okay, so this is, these are, this is an arid world, an arctic world. Mm. Do I want to go with Mintaka or Barnard Star? This would give us more, like, immediate resources. I think we're going to go with that first. But then we'll we'll go for something else uh, later. Maybe we'll expand into this direction. But I think first we'll take this, we'll get the trade value, and we'll get the other bonuses from there. I think that's the way to go. Right, okay, that was actually really good selling that. And then uh, the Precursors. Yes. Okay, so we need six artifacts. And then we'll be able to locate their home system, which usually is like a really cool world. Um, now the Ute, I've had them before. They're not the best, if I remember correctly. System like, I think the Cybrax, complete. they're the ones that give you a uh, a ring world, a broken ring world, but a ring world nonetheless. Um, and then, you know, there's some other cool ones. I think the Ute, I think they're probably like the the most boring. I don't know, but we'll see. I've, I actually don't know. And maybe maybe things have changed. Uh, that's possible too. But yeah, let's quickly check out these two planets. Oh, they're right next to each other as well. That's so interesting. This is actually a moon and a planet. But interestingly, 
Okay, I was just gonna say, uh, the moon is larger than the planet, but no, that's not the case. Okay, is there any, like, special modifiers here? Noxious swamps, hot springs, geothermal vents, aura veined cliffs, rich mountain, holy hell. Wait, what? Wow, a fungal forest? Interesting. Wait, how does there a fungal forest on an arctic world? Seems strange. But I guess it's possible. What do you have here? A desert, bubbling swamp, quicksand basin. All right, cool. That's cool. And we have more. Our we governor has leveled up, and our scientists have as well. A routine anomaly will research. Atmospheric readings do not match simulated projections. Let's uh, check that out as well. All right, and uh, I just realized we have actually found a new planet, a desert world. Okay, 18. This is the largest size planet we have found so far. Very cool. Um, I think on that note, I'll end today's episode. We have not yet expanded, but we are about to expand into the Barnard Star system. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where else we go next. But yeah, that was it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.